Hello, welcome back to Legion's channel. Today I have very special guest to share with you. Remember I talked about on the channel that uh, I will invite my teacher to come to the show. And today is very special day because I also live, live stream this to my group, which is called the Passion for Our Soul Tribe. The guest, as you know, on the title is as an astrologer. Um, let me uh, just briefly tell you about a little bit about her background and we'll invite her in. As a practicing uh, astrologer, Stormy Grace houses her show on YouTube. She has been producing content in Colorado and around the globe since 2014. Holding a doctorate of business enables her to apply those skills to business and mundane astrology, as well as personal chore work. She specializes in teaching group, one-on-one -on -one sessions, and clients readings. Without further ado, let's have a warm welcome to Dr. Stormy Grace to the show. <laughs> Hi, hello everyone. Hi, Stormy. Welcome. Yes, thank How you are for you? having me. This is so exciting. I, I remember when you were just creating this. So I know. I know. And and today, actually, um, I was thinking before um invite you in, I was thinking about the day, how we connected. Can I tell a little yeah. bit? Yeah. So uh, back in 2019. I was in this online course so called the Soul Purpose, and she was the first astrologer talking about sun sign. Um, during my college year, I always admire people who can do this. Either I listen to the radio, magazine, or newspaper, but I basically I know my sun sign, moon sign, and rising sign, but I don't know too much about it. And there's even a natal chart. So I met this teacher and I said, wow, I love her energy. I want to follow her. And the rest is history. <laughs> Here she is. Stormy, tell me, uh, to tell everybody, how did you uh, get into astrology? How You have so much passion. I saw you on YouTube. So many videos you have produced. I don't know. You are such a hardworking, brilliant uh, individual. I like to know know you uh, about more your background and tell the world about you okay yeah absolutely well you know it was i don't know everybody just has their own story and so for me when i was really little i mean i was probably about six and i really just realized i saw the world a bit differently i realized i knew that there was more than just what was physically happening in this plane that there were things in other planes and that we all belonged to all of them at different times so i kind of naturally had that default setting and i've always loved color so you can probably see all of the color back here um, einstein and, <laughs> I, I love the einstein. And, tree, and i have a zebra i have a cheetah behind the door and just blasts of color and that is the way the world has always made sense to me and my mother just really understood that about me. And she took me to my first metaphysical fair when I was about six and I just fell in love with astrology. I, it didn't feel like I was learning something. It felt like I was being called back to something I had done a hundred times, you know? So it was the most natural fit. And because it was so natural, I didn't ever really work hard at it or anything. You know, I would study and I would kind of keep it in my mind, but I went a very academic route, but I went academically while also understanding I was in the flow of where I was supposed to be. So it was like spiritually led, but traditional academia and astrology is like hanging out over here, you know, and it wasn't until, gosh, about eight years ago that it just full force hit me when I was in this career that I loved. I, it hit me that it was time for me to go and really start my astrology practice, get under a specific mentor myself just to make sure I was refined enough and to get going. And that is exactly what I did. And it has been, you know, it's just been boots on the ground since then. <laughs> 
Wow, that's something. That's being since 2013, 14, correct? 2013, yes. 14. And before that, I, I think I was uh, seeing that a lot of episodes you were talking about, you also do DJ and you are a dancer. Is that correct? Is that yes, your I, passion? Yes, I, I have been dancing since I was three. My first little set of tap shoes that I ever had. And I'm a tapper. Like I love tap dance, but I just love to move. And then, yes, you know, for a decade, I was a radio DJ. I was a radio programmer. I was the weather girl. I did all of that in in, in radio. And it was amazing. And it, it was not something that I chose to do. I didn't really go to school to study that. I fell into it. And on the other side of starting my own business and hosting my show and having a podcast, I mean, it taught me how to do those things. Those people trained me and raised me well in the energy of broadcasting, really. That's interesting. Do you draw or paint? Oh my goodness, no. None of this is mine. <laughs> you just, you're not like me. I, I'm no. a little bit like a photography. Look at behind me. That's my my dad. He was an art teacher. So if he still live, he will like you because you you have that energy of Venus, right? And oh, yeah. artists love that Venus. They need that Venus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, let's talk about right now. We know we are in a lot of Aquarius, right? There's so many uh, planet on, on Aquarius, and as, as, especially today, it's so interesting. It's the uh, what is that Mercury retrograde? So it's to review, revise. So we are like reviewing and revise at this yes. time. We are. Yeah, we, we have the next three weeks that I actually think are a really big gift to us as a, as a collective because we came whooshing through 2020 into 2021. The world is kind of open, but kind of closed. You know, mm -hmm. we're just, things are beginning to look different, but not fully yet. So really under a Mercury retrograde, which is our planet that's all about our thinking, our minds, our communication, our decision-making business. How do we do business? As this planet is in retrograde, we get to go back over everything we have learned for this last year, certainly for these last handful of months, and just assimilate the information, absorb what's happening. If there has been paperwork like taxes or anything like that, practical things that need to be wrapped up, we have all of February essentially to get those things done and just review what's been going on, make some peace with it so that as we're getting into the March energy, we can use that springtime to come forward and we can all spring forward together into what our next reality is. Because the fact is in Aquarius, nothing just happened in the United States. Nothing just happened in Japan. Things that happened in 2020 and will happen through 2021 are a collective involvement of us setting different um, allies on the world stage, allies in our personal stage, right? So it's a big time for yes, us. For sure. Yes. Last year was so much energy, but talking about the Mercury retrograde, as I'm still learning a lot of astrology ever since the first class you have, you know, your individual, not individual, that group class and your, your group class. But um, I understand astrologers know about this term. A lot of people come to the show or even this group, they are pretty laymen. Can you explain a little bit? It's really this planet is like a backwards. Can you explain just a little bit so people know a little bit why about what, what is this about, the retrograde thing? Absolutely. So yes, let me explain first. Truly, if you're very new to this, you have no idea what all of this is about, that's totally okay, even if you know a little bit. The biggest concept to keep in mind with astrology is its connection to astronomy. And energetically, what we view it as, the interpretation in astrology, is that we have this planet Mercury in the sky, and we are made of the same energies, the same stardust, the same makeup as those big old planets out there. So when something happens to them, 
it will happen within us. Some planets are closer, so we can really see it when it happens, and some are further, and it's a little bit more subtle. Mercury is a very close to us planet, so when Mercury has a movement or is doing something in the sky, we all, nobody is exempt from the movement of these energies, so we pay a lot of attention. And because Mercury is so personal and close to us, we have to look at the astronomy of what's happening. What is Mercury's movement? Is he close to the sun? Because when Mercury's close to the sun, we're all very busy. We are all very busy because we get caught up in this energy. That's the vibration that hits us. You know how they say, catch the vibe or go with the flow. That's what they're talking about. Now, as Mercury retrogrades, the astronomy is actually not that the planet flips around backwards. It's that the planet goes in a kind of an S and an Orby shape. Okay. So it's making a movement. But the way that we interpret that in astrology for any number of our planets is that we say they go backwards. So the vision is that you're, here's your planet of thinking and decision making, and it's going forward and you're making all of these brilliant decisions in your life. And then he slows down to retrograde and you've got to review some things in your life because it's like extra energy that you've collected that needs to be sorted out right? It's the paperwork that you just need to go ahead and sign it. It's the conversation you need to just go ahead and have it or whatever. So that's kind of the idea when we're talking about these energies is first of all, those big old balls, whether you just come from astronomy or astrology, when something happens to them, it shakes down to the little people and that's us and something will be stimulated. And in the retrograde, we get to review where we'll go back. So that's exactly what's what's going on thank you for that that probably can explain a little bit about what is this about as above so below as within so without and there's a master astrologer uh rick levine he always said uh think think uh cosmically and act locally yeah something like that <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm so glad he he will be teaching your this uh, project um you know what i have so many questions you know last year was so challenging and your energy is so vibrant how do you keep so joyful and peaceful in a challenging time can you share a little bit like um about this to the viewers they, they can learn something from you right <laughs> i hope so Anybody from everyone you are a teacher we will listen yeah well i can tell you that for me it just comes down to the root root of all things for me and that is where am i spiritually with my life with this power with whatever so it's very much so for me comes down to what is the level of my spiritual fitness because i feel like when i'm spiritually solid you know i'm connected i am i'm able to take care of myself from then i'm able to ebb and flow with what is going on in the world without being just knocked off my feet, which, you know, I'm almost 40 years old. I have definitely been knocked on my butt before. You are so young. You are a millennial. The gen generation is at Z. I'm right? a millennial. I'm in between the, um, the, the Y and Y and Z. Uh, I am generation X. I'm one generation. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a zennial. My husband and I are right, right there. But when we started to change, so you know, <laughs> I, I think that that is the biggest thing that happens for me is I just know that if I get spiritually untethered from my spiritual practices, from going to ground, then the rest is really just a crapshoot. I may or may not make it. I may or not be become the victim of my day as opposed to being, you know, proactive instead of reactive. But also for me, being spiritually grounded means that I can experience the emotions that I need to as mm -hmm. a human being based on what's going on without having to burn my life to the ground, essentially. That's right. It yeah. allows me to understand that there are no new life human or cosmic patterns. We've been doing the same thing since humans have been human. So I've got to be willing to kind of surrender to the flow of the cycle. But astrology also helps me understand what's the cycle. 
Because if I can understand a little bit about what's going on, which you don't always get all the answers, that's the reality, right? But if I can understand a little bit of what's going on in this cycle, I don't know, for me, it helps me let my guard down a little, learn with it, go with it, be proactive instead of reactive. And that is really how I keep the vibe high. I wish I was just a naturally happy, bubbly person. And maybe I am, but I, I think that it really comes from the spiritual work. I meditate, I take inventory, I talk to my spiritual teacher about what's really going on in my heart, what's really going on in my head, so that we can just get sorted, you know? So that's what it fully comes down to for me. And then the rest of the things are a bonus. I I agree with you. I do uh, dancing a little bit and meditation, maybe sometimes Tai Chi yoga, all of that combination. But to uh, to do the meditation daily and is to come down back to your heart is important mm-hmm. because otherwise we're being scattered all over the place. Do you agree? I absolutely yes. agree. And it's that place where I can tell the days if I've like skipped a meditation or something, I can <laughs> feel it. And you know how I feel it is like a regular human, you know, something will happen and I just get this kind of tightness in the pit of my stomach. And I know it's because I'm annoyed or I'm whatever, or I'm going to be controlling in some way. And it's because I just haven't started my day with surrendering myself to what the day's got to offer. I can feel it when I don't meditate. Oh my goodness, I can feel it. And sometimes just trust your intuition as well. You know, I also like to ask you about, I know I've been I've been following you for a while since 2019 and I saw your growing to more and more like, like eat and greet, you know, the series. I would like the viewer to know about that. They can also check it out, your YouTube, which is Stormy Grace, correct? Yes. On YouTube. And recently you have this big project coming up. I think this oh. is a great news for the whole world because there will be, I will let you uh, introduce that. It's some kind of Kickstarter. Uh, crowdfunding thing, right? Can you talk a little bit about that so more people know about this great, um, is it free astrology lessons or academy, right? Yes. Please go ahead. Oh, gosh. So we're here in Aquarian times, which is very much so about communal things and also how do we take things forward. And one of the things that I heard in 2020 over and over again is that we had areas of our astrological community and in the world that were just underserved in terms of genuine astrological information that had maybe pieces and bad information leads to a bad rap really quickly or misuse of information. So there was just like this space where astrology education wasn't there Or it was so expensive that people, especially in 2020, just couldn't do it. They just couldn't Mm -hmm. afford the prices of classes. And I will say this too, to all of my people who study astrology, teach astrology, I think all of our classes are priced beautifully. But this Mm -hmm. just happens to be a little bit of a unique time. So what I decided to launch out is huge and crazy, but so far beautiful. I've decided to not teach any of my group classes privately this year. I'm teaching them all live on YouTube. So if you can access YouTube, you can watch them. And I've invited master teachers. And at this point, I invited 12 master teachers to come teach with me. And I now have 28 master teachers from around wow. the globe who have signed up. Yes. So I will so teach support. Every month. Yes, they have just shown up to do this. So I will teach a lesson every month and then the master teachers are coming in to deepen the lesson, give you another perspective of that. They are coming to share their astrology education and knowledge with you. It is in a solid, consistent stream of videos. So by the end of the year, you haven't had to cherry pick videos. You get a solid class for a year and then additional education. And on top of that, we realize there's one of me and like, over a hundred thousand people learning astrology right now. So there was no way I was going to be able to handle everything by myself. So we're also offering paid teaching assistant positions, which means if you've been learning astrology forever, now you get to come use it and help other people learn, but we're going to also create a revenue stream for you this year. That's a great idea. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would I will award you the 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 young entrepreneur under 40. Ta-da. <laughs> Hello, gorgeous. Cheers to you. I'm really proud of you. Really, I, I, I'm so proud of you uh, about what you do because a lot of people might like to learn because but then they might be tied out on something, but you help some somebody. And this yeah. is a ripple effect. That's a, a a great endeavor and great cause. It's huge. It's very big. <laughs> and I, I know that it has not, at least in the history of YouTube, been done this way. So we're also... Oh, all, I never saw that. Yeah. yeah we're going to make a little history with this one. So we're still campaigning. We're still raising the funds to get it done. We're going to be yeah. subtitling these videos, giving scholarships to conference. It's a really big undertaking for 2021. So I, I hope you guys will be excited and come support and come learn. It's exciting. So I'll make sure you guys have the link. So the link, I will put it on the YouTube description below and also on this, uh, this, this group. So you can check it out what she's up to okay thank you very much for that but i would like to ask uh this question is kind of a big so there's a lot of generation i i before this interview i uh kind of google it so there's a silent uh generation baby boomer generation y z that's zoomer and alpha which group do you think is more keen to astrology as you are practicing them or your client do you see a lot about average everyone is interested or particularly some group are interested in astrology sure and i actually think you know it's a, and it is an exciting time because we have a lot of generations alive together at the same time <laughs> yeah. on the planet right now so that's people live longer now people live yes. longer Exactly. So, I mean, we genuinely have people alive right now and not like one or two anymore, but we have groupings of people who are over a hundred years old and two day old babies. And we're all in between. We've got a large span of us. And I will tell you the thing that I'm seeing more and more across the board over this last few years is that it is really a mixed bag. It is really a mixed bag. And you would think that based on different generations, some are more interested than others, which yes, in a slight numbered way, I think that's happening. But in my clientele base, I can tell you my demographic of people are between 35 and 55. Those are the people who love me the okay. most. But I have another astrologer friend who her demographic are people between 12 and 25. You know, well, so, that's something. So they yeah. are like, um, alpha because 2010 is a, to now is generation alpha and zoomer are 1997 to 2016 i used to interpreting so i listened to all those keynote speakers talking about generation because for the business so that's interesting to me i i think i i'm not qualified to be teaching yet but i have so so much to learn there's so many layers and yeah. i believe i have a little bit gift by following a, a great teacher so far is like concurrently two to three i'm following after your class for sure your your content has produced so much wisdom in there already i would just wish i can know know you uh maybe a bit earlier <laughs> but it's all, all the right timing right it's all meant to be at the the right time i believe exactly yeah, before exactly. we part I, I don't want to occupy too much of your time. I, I believe you have so much to do. Let's play a little bit game. Give us a little bit one or two keyword. And I try to uh, say from Aries and you give a little bit keyword for each sign, what that's okay. supposed to mean. Is it okay? Yes, Will that be fun? Yes. <laughs> I have to remember because I didn't memorize. So Aries, the keyword. Okay. Aries are our warriors and our initiators of the Zodiac. So they're going to be our go people. Taurus. Taurus is lovely and slower and they're going to beautify and make things very rich and very steady. Just to clarify, we are talking about sun sign, right? Sun. Well, just the signs themselves. Because even if just the sign moon, itself, because yeah. a different planet could be there. Okay. That's another area. That's that's not this this that's this a whole other thing <laughs> yeah that's a lot okay so aries starting point then taurus and then gemini 
Gemini, these are our communicators and our social butterflies or our networkers. So if you have Gemini energy, you are a networker in some way. You have what I we am. call word magic. Word I have magic. Ascendant, ascendant in Gemini. <laughs> okay, then Cancer. Cancer, nurturing, but Cancer is also the nurturing soldier. So this is the protector as well, but this is definitely our nurturing energy. Like a mother? Like mother. the mother or just, just nurturing because it can even be the father, but just think the word very much so nurturing. Leo. <laughs> Leo, this is our bright star, right? This is ruled by yeah. the sun. So Leo is like, here I am. This is our, this is our king. This is our queen. This is this big hearted, brave energy. Leo the lion. The lion. Virgo. Virgo, these are our healers, the natural healer of the zodiac, also our no natural pattern finders. So Virgos are going to be able to pick out patterns of what's going on, whether it's medicine problems, organization, any of those things. Virg Virgos are here to make it right and efficient. Professionist details. Yes. Libra. Libra, these are our relationships right? So they want balance, but they want relationships. Libra understands you can only go so far on your own. So at the level of relationships, we're going to meet up with our beautiful diplomatic Libras. Libra, I think Scorpio. Scorpio, yeah, that's right. Scorpio is one of our most vulnerable signs of the zodiac, which is why they also will keep to themselves or they seem a bit more mysterious because they don't want to be hurt because they're so open and so vulnerable when they give. They give at a level of depth and intensity that can be really scary if you're not used to having somebody that vulnerable in your world, but they will change and transform your life for sure. I think it to the point, right? <laughs> They can be, they can be, some of them are not, but they can be for sure. For sure, right? Sagittarius. Sagittarius, this is another joy sign, another fire sign. So Sagittarius is our great philosopher, our guru, our archer. They want to travel, they want to see things. So the great adventurer and the great knowledge keeper of our zodiac. Good. Capricorn. Capricorn, these are our business folks, right? We're going to get it done. We're going to achieve with our Capricorn energy. They understand that things need structure, that they need to be managed, that they need a pathway if you're going to climb and succeed and be successful. Like a boss and CEO type? Absolutely. And they can be the CEOs of, you know, the ant farm or Coke. <laughs> like it doesn't matter from big to little. Our Capricorn energies just want to help you achieve. Get things done. Get things done. Uh, Aquarius. <laughs> Aquarius. Yeah, where we're at right now in our energy and Aquarian energy, these are our friends. This is a friendly energy, but these are also our future minded water bearers. And even though they bear water, they're an air energy. So this is also one of our most intellectual signs. They come up with ideas and solutions that take us forward. Could be a little bit rebel. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Because sometimes you've got to buck the system in order to go forward. Yes. The last one of the Zodiacs, Pisces. Pisces. These are our keepers of it all, from the lessons to the hurts, to the pains, to the joys, to the most creative expression we have of anything we've ever experienced comes through the lens of Pisces, the double fish. The double fish tell us it's yin and yang. It all has to go together. So Pisces is our beautiful assimilator of the zodiac. So beautiful, sad, stormy doctor. Thank you so much. Before part, the real party, do you have any words of wisdom to the viewers at this Absolutely. time? Yeah, I think that 2021 is different than other years, but not also. I think this year, if you can answer the question of where are you grounded and what are you grounded into so that you can also be that reed that bends and doesn't have to break, that's going to be very helpful to you. And to look to resources that bring you joy. It's okay to just have a good laugh at something silly in the middle of the day. Don't take yourself so seriously. Give yourself a breather so that you have the energy and the stamina to move forward with what actually needs to be done in your life in 2021. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure and honor to have you here on this platform. 
maybe when you have more time, we'll invite you back again. How about that sound? I would love to. I would love to. And thank you so much for having me. This is just wonderful to see how you've grown as well. Thank you. We'll see each other somewhere on the internet. <laughs> very soon and everybody if you like uh stormy please just go to her website uh, uh, her website or either will be all down below and youtube you can subscribe today if you want and uh spread the world share this this channel will be growing as well i believe because of stormy yay because of her visit. Framework. yeah so happy Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Thank and you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. See you.